was saying. Yes. 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 My yes. 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 on the trip that we took I was glad to be able to go with um, my pastor and with the other brothers that went we had a good time but um, I was really encouraged when we sat in the church you know sometimes it's nice to get out and see that there's a whole world out there and there's a lot more people out there that are Christians than just you and I it's not just me that that's serving God it's not just you we're not alone we're not it's not just um, a our church here that we love dearly and we're a part of, but it's not just it's not just us. There's a God, God's much bigger than that. He has, he has a plan that's much bigger than that that involves each and every one of us. It doesn't um, involve just our pastor, but it involves me and it involves you. I was over. I was just thinking, you know, Brother Matthew, I'd like to make a change to the revival. Sorry, I know I might catch you off guard, but Monday. But we keep talking about Monday, but as far as I know, Saturday, tonight, actually, is when the revival started. Um, for me, actually, is when it, the revival starting tonight. So I, I have the, the Holy Spirit inside of me. It's just burning and burning. Somebody, somebody said to me the other day, uh, in the past few weeks, I've seen you change. Joel, I've seen you change. What, what, what is it? I said... I just uh, read a scripture the other day, and and um, yes, come on. I said I'm going to test it. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm going to test it. Test it. Right. it says, "Draw nigh to God, yeah, yeah. and He will draw nigh yeah. to you." Yeah. So I said, "Okay, well, God, I'm going to try it. Yeah. I'm going I'm to." And you say, "You've been in church. I'm going to try it. Yeah. I'm going to try to draw closer to God." Come yeah. um, on. And He's been fulfilling that scripture yes. in my life Lord. and brother Rose yes. said that we have that he spoke about that girl that came to, to the property the heroin she was on heroin yes. there is a world out there come on trust me there's a big world out there that that has a lot of problems yes. and we're talking about real problems yes. i don't know how many here have been through some real problems. Yes, real. I'm not talking about you couldn't pay your power bill, but I'm talking about a real problem. Real I'm talking about a problem that God yeah. helped you with. Yeah. How many here have had a real experience yeah. with God? Yeah. Not not a not just a I felt something Come on, or not just a Come prayer on. that you prayed and you got inspired by a preacher, but I mean a real experience yes. with God. I know that I have. I can't speak for you, but I know that I have had a, a very real experience with God that's undeniable. Um, I can't speak for you, but I was reading in, um, I guess it would be thir uh, Friday during the day. Uh, we, we had some downtime, and I started uh, just reading, lay laying on the bed, and the Lord started speaking to me. He started speaking to me, and, and, and I, I've read, probably read this chapter many times. It's Galatians, the first chapter. I've read it over and over many times, but you know how you can read the Bible and then read it again and read it again and read it again, and you get something different, something different, something different, something different or more and more and more. Um, and I'm just going to try to tie in, and if, if I don't see it tying, I'll, I'll get out of the way because I, I do not want to be a hindrance to the Spirit of God. I want to I want to uh, um, add to I don't want to be a stumbling block for anybody but thank you praise the Lord praise the Lord thank you Jesus Him enough credit for what he's done. Maybe you don't really understand what he's done for you. Not everybody has the privilege or the or the priv the privilege to to experience what we have. I've been around people that haven't had the same experience that don't have the same thing that we have. That's the truth. 
The church has got to be activated. And the only way that the church can get more activated is that individually we take on the burden of the church. Amen. Individually. Amen. Each and every one of us. Yes. In Galatians, just hang in with me on this. In Galatians, the first chapter, it says, Paul, an apostle. That's what I read right there. Paul, an apostle. He, he, Paul was an apostle. He had a gift. He was one of the fivefold ministers. But do you know that each and every person here has a gift from God? Yes, they do. There is a fivefold ministry, but each and every person here has a gift from God. Each and every single person that's sitting here, if you're sitting in the pew tonight, you have a calling and a work. You're quiet and you're looking at me funny, but... We need to really understand that each and every person here has a calling and a gift. You have a call. Listen, point at yourself and say, I have a calling. I, Joel, I have a calling. And if I do not fulfill that calling, I'm responsible to God for that calling. Paul said that I am an apostle. Listen to me now. Joel is a whatever God's called me to do. Sister Shock is a whatever God's called you to do. Make this scripture personal for you, okay? Not of men, neither by men. No man has called you. No man has put the calling in your life. And no man has put the gift in your life. No man. God has called you. It's not by man. And it's not from man. So you are not responsible to man for your calling. You're not responsible to anybody for your calling. You're responsible to God for your calling and which your calling came from. Don't let me lose you. I'm telling you, I'm speaking to every single person sitting in the pew. Everybody, don't let these words that we've used for years, callings and gifts and apostles and fivefold ministries, don't just let it let your mind wander up here. Because the whole church, the whole church is one body. And there's one body, one Lord, and one spirit. There's an order that God works in. I understand that. But in that order, there must be a calling for each and every person for it to work. It says it's not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ. Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Every single person here has got a gift, and it is not by any man. It is from God the Father. And we might take that lightly in some ways, or take it for granted. Now, do you understand who God is? God is the person, or one, or, or being... That saved my soul and delivered me out of the pit of hell. Delivered. He's the one. Nobody else. No man could have got me out of there. Not one single person. Only one. That was God. That's right. That was God. Now, I can't go through this whole chapter, so if I, I skim through part of it, bear with me. But you should read this chapter in this context. But after that first verse, it goes through, he talks about another doctrine and different people bringing in a doctrine. And then in the 10th verse, he says, for I do now persuade, for I, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Or to please God? Or God? Or do I seek to... For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. I told my pastor that I sit sometimes because of fear or intimidation. Come on. I don't always do what I 
know God wants yes. me to do on, out of Hallelujah. personal fear yes. or intimidation. Yes. That fear and intimidation comes from what somebody might think yes. and do. And I know I'm not alone on that. You don't no, have sir, to shake brother. your head yes or no. You don't have to physically agree and let everybody know, but I am not alone on that. Trust me, I'm a human being just like you. And yes, I worry about what other people think, even though I shouldn't, but I do. And I allow that to affect me, even though I shouldn't, but I do. None of us should allow what anyone thinks hinder us from fulfilling the calling Amen. that God has Amen. given Amen. each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Josh sang Amen. last night, and it was beautiful. He gave a little testimony, and it was beautiful. I mean, it was beautiful. Was it not yes, it, was. it was beautiful. You know why it was beautiful? Because he has a calling from God. Praise God. Josh, you're responsible. You alone. You're responsible for that calling. If you don't fulfill it, you can say it's because of this or because of that. But at the end of the day, none of that's going to matter. You're responsible to God, not man. Because man did not give you the gift. Man did not give you the calling. The calling and the gift is from Christ Jesus. From God the Father who raised Christ Jesus. You and every other person in here. I urge you to pray and seek God. Search out what God has called you to do. And find a way to do it. Don't let fear of failure hold you back. Don't let fear of what somebody may may or may not think about you hold you back. If you read at the end of that verse, it says this. I, it, if I try to please man, he goes through that and he says, I should not be the servant of Christ. If you are letting fear hold you back or you're letting the common opinion keep you from fulfilling your calling, you're not a servant of Christ. Amen. You're a servant yes, sir. Right. of man's right. opinion yes, sir. and your fear. Yes. So that then you thereby become serving man and not God. Amen. You're serving man, Amen. not God, because you're allowing what someone else may think or do. Or say, hold you back from doing what God has called you to do. If you read on in the 11th, 12th, and 13th verse, um, it talks more about uh, God and the calling coming. Paul goes back again to uh, where it count, the calling comes from. But in the 13th verse, it says this. It says, for you have heard of my conversation in times past in the Jews' religion. How that beyond measure I pers persecuted the church of God yeah. and wasted it. Yeah. When you start to move out in God, and you start to step out, Josh, Brother Terry, Brother Liebman, when you start to step out, people are going to remind you of your past. That's what's going to come up. Because as you move out into your calling, see, I heard uh, somebody preach one time and they said that when a baby is born, when, when the baby comes out of the mother, okay, it's left one world and has entered into a new world. Okay, but when that baby first comes out, it still has a part of the other world that it just came from still on it. So when you move out into your calling or when you see, when you see somebody trying to move up higher in God, don't be very careful how you look at them and how you judge them 
on how they act, what they say, what they do. Nobody is perfect, but if they're moving out in their calling, you can, you can bet your bottom dollar that there's a portion of the world that they're coming from still on. Come on, Joel. It's still there. When a sinner comes, when a heroin addict or a alcoholic or a, a smoker comes into the church, a sinner comes into the church, if they're saved, and they come down and they're saved, we can't expect that person. <laughs> you got to hear me, church. you got to get with me. You can't expect that person who just was spiritually born to not have a part of the world still on him. That's right. I can't look at those things that are left over that are still on him and start to push them back out the door because they're still not the way I feel like they should be. And it's the same thing whenever I or you start to try to come up higher in God in our calling. I may not have it all perfect yet, but my God, Brother Ma said, I, what, I died climbing, yeah. or I died, I died climbing. Die. Yeah. climbing. Yeah. 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 Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? Yeah. Sister Shock, you have a calling. You're still important to this church. You still have a purpose that is vital to the future of this church right That's here. It. That's yeah. it. Not just this church, but people that are coming into this That's church. It. You still have a purpose. I know that you are right now, until God heals you, you're in that chair and you're limited in mobility. But don't let the devil fool you into thinking that you can't fulfill a calling that God has given you. Don't let anybody look at you or say, don't allow what you might hear, what you think, what fear or a fear of failure, whatever it is that you, you deal with. Don't let that hold you back because the calling comes from God. You're still responsible to fulfill what God has called you to do. Praise the Lord. Listen to me, church. Brother Rhodes said, write it down. Write this down. Yes. There's two things that identify that you're identified by. Yeah. Two things. This is not Joel Zonville. Now, either we start believing that God's speaking to people, or we're just not going to believe it, and we're not going to move on. But this is from God. So I would consider it and write it down. Or remember it. There's two things. This ain't from Joel. <laughs> Joel ain't this smart, okay? Trust me. There's two things that you're identified by. Your past, okay? Which you can't change. You can't change. And there's n number two. There's a stipulation on number two, okay? You're identified by your past, and you're identified by the choices that you make in the present. Amen. Those are the two things that you're identified by. Yes. Now here's the catch on number two. If you allow the past to control the choices of your present, then that's how you are going to be identified. Period. Amen. Here's the second stipulation. If you take your past, <laughs> Y'all better get with me. If you take your past and make decisions for your present to change your future into a different direction, which would be fulfilling your calling in God, you will be identified as one, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's go to the 15th verse. 
but when it pleased God, who separated me. Paul talked about the past in um, his past in the 13th and 14th verse, but he said, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb. Now, if I can say it like this, my mother's womb, personally speaking, was my past, and I was stuck in my past, the things that I was doing when, that, when my past was my present. I was stuck in those things. Out of that womb of sin, there was a time, Brother Rose was there, Brother Langford was there. Do you remember? There was a day when God finally said, I separate you from the womb of what you're caught in. Separate you. And, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Now this is where the present choice fits in here. To reveal, you can choose whether to allow your past to reveal his son in me, that I might, you fill in the blank, Paul said, preach him among the heathens. And a 